Hey everybody, it's George the Tech for VOBS. I am at a client studio that I've worked with for a mm, couple of years now to get the perfect home studio situation built and perhaps a less than perfect location. And maybe in a minute, you'll see what I mean. So you see there's a bit of a problem with this location. Just a bit. You just to work with a little airline like Southwest. Yeah, they're a lot louder. <laughs> but it doesn't matter now, right Ben? Not at all. Not at all. That's it's good. a beautiful thing. That's nothing. The freight airliners are the worst. Like the FedEx and yeah, stuff? The FedEx so. and, yeah, the FedEx and, yeah. FedEx and UPS. 7.30 every day yeah. Oh, yeah right right after jeopardy oh, I, have, I have southwest schedule memorized <laughs> <laughs> I got it down. this is a two-car garage right a two-car garage just a standard two-car garage mm -hmm. come on in let's take a look now it's really comfy in here this is an azu in the booth doing what he does can you hear me how about i give you some venom Peter Parker, I will destroy you, Peter. <laughs> These doors were custom made for the space overseas. Yeah, in <laughs> Indonesia. In Indonesia. Yeah. So the, only the finest teak. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Look at that air gap. And that, so that's freaking crazy. Wow. That's that a is. one and a half inch gap all the way around. And that was the big thing is... You know, what we learned was the level of low in frequency that we were dealing with, we had to truly decouple. And oh, yeah. So this is this is a completely decoupled construction. It's you know, channel strips and all that. Technically, no. the only coupling would be this piece of concrete right here. Right. This is It's it's not a cut slab, yeah. which some studios do. Yeah, right. concrete doesn't really carry sound very well. Much. It's really right. low, 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 low stuff. So, and then all of this is hardwired except for my Bluetooth mouse. So it's all connected directly to Ethernet on the outside of the of the booth. Yeah, hardwired is the way to go. Yeah, you know, it's... and this size triad orbit was perfect for it mm -hmm. because this the booth is only five by six, so it's not mm -hmm. a huge booth. No, but it's I mean, perfect size. It's a good size though. Yeah, it'll fit Plenty two people. Plenty of room for a chair. We've, I've I've been doing some podcast recording. People are using the space to do podcasts in here, and yeah. it's comfortable with two tall oh. chairs. And yeah. I've got the the forty seventy three directional here, and I've got the TLM one hundred three. So mm -hmm. yeah. You know. Everything was custom made, to obviously, to fit in the space. Right. The table was cut. Everything was drawn and yeah. measured we, and agonized over. Every square inch of this place yeah. was agonized over. The big thing is that instead of just going with standard, like, 24 by panels, your recommendation, George, was to just, just cover the walls with panels. And, like, this one, for example, is just one large panel with rock wall oh, insulation, can. you know. And, uh, you know, and then the other big thing, obviously, is that we have an ERV system in the closet outside that's pumping fresh air from outside into this space. So we have the central air and in addition, we have the ERV that's pumping fresh air in, which is That's a big awesome. deal. Not everybody, yeah. well, actually most people's studios don't do that. Yeah. And not especially like a quote unquote home studio. Mm. This is definitely like, this is beyond the home studio. <laughs> this is definitely next level. Well, I mean, but you, you could know, sit in here and work comfortably for hours. I do. I do. I mean, the majority of my work is group ADR, where you're doing a movie for eight hours. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so you're literally sitting in the booth for, you know, hours on end. But the, you know, the big difference was that it wasn't just for personal use because of Voice Actors Network. I wanted to be able to host like a workout group or a class here. Four inches here. Mm -hmm. We have, is it four inches on this the is, ceiling? This is three? actually three, three, three and inches. a half. This is six. Oh, we got six on the ceiling? I so forgot. Six, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Is all rock wool or all rock wool? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that wall also three or three and a half? Is three that the same as this? Yeah, all these are three and a half on the and walls. And then the ceiling there. cloud is is the uh the six inch. Very nice. But I, I tell you what, come in here and close both these doors. Close that door. It's very quiet. It's very quiet. Uh, don't think I've been in a room this quiet. All we can hear is our into this <laughs> yeah it's, it's extremely it. loud in here as a matter of fact yeah 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 are you gonna play some 
did you just did you just watch me talk into the headphones like a microphone? <laughs> did everybody see that? I, I have it on. Just want to make sure. <laughs> I don't know if you're hearing us. Play some, play some music so we can hear if there's any bleed. Okay, can he we, is. I think he's event. blasting some Star Wars right now. Yeah, it's. I, I know it's blasting. I can tell. I'm looking at the view meter on the Apollo, and it is cranked. It is like That's blasting. Great. That's great. Wow, <laughs> that is good, man. Maybe get yeah, one of the the doors because I will say without without these. Sliders, it, it definitely would not be possible. But two sets of regular sliders. Oh, gee, yeah. You know, feel this, Dan. Try to pull that. This, so yeah, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that door there. You need some slaves to, like, that is a serious, yeah, that. serious What do you think my door. kids are for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, Start them early. But we weren't intending to have that door there. That was code. Oh yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They had to. He had to have this door. Like if I had designed it, and we did design it, we didn't want to have two doors. Right. The last thing you want to do right. is have two sets of doors. Two to sets of doors. But More this penetrations. Was, yeah. So this. Uh, all right, I, I've got my resistance exercise. Oh man. <laughs> this, so, very, this his muscle confusion is a whole nother. It's like his <laughs> muscles are very confused. But now. yeah, I was like, oh my god, you really? We have to have that door too? Yeah. But this is two, but, so. Yeah, should you get right? That and then door. we've got the big rubber seals, which, by the way, this is for a car door. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's right. trunk rubber. Right. We call it trunk rubber. Yeah. Trunk rubber. Yeah. But so honestly, out of everything, this is the because these are just two oh, regular yeah. doors. It's just you know, look at that. This is a, this is the first soundproof Windows door I've actually seen in the wild. Oh yeah. Installed in the, yeah. In the wild. Well, you know, I, I recommend Look stuff all the time. In its natural environment. <laughs> yeah. But I rarely get to see them in, in actual use. So. Yeah. yeah. And this is the living quarters ERV, mm -hmm. which I've had running the whole time. I didn't even notice. Because yeah, I turned it on and wanted to see if I could hear it. Can't hear it. So we were talking a little bit earlier. How long ago did the project start in, in earnest where you were like, okay, I've got a team. We're ready to go. I paid a deposit. How long ago was that? We broke ground in October of 20. We filed for the permits in November 19, and it took almost a year to get the permits from the city of Burbank. That's better than the city of Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, right. But then, obviously, when the pandemic hit, it slowed everything down as far as the processing time. And then we started to run into stuff with the contractor where supplies weren't available or, you know, a lot of that stuff started to rear its ugly head. Uh, but yeah, October of 20 is when we actually started the construction and got things underway. So, and we were bare bones. So, yeah. So it wasn't breaking ground. It was sledgehammering. And sledgehammering. Demo. There was trenching because we yeah. had all the utilities because it was, it's not just a, the studio where it's, a, right. it's a, uh, an ADU, an yeah. yeah. alternate dwelling unit. And through the city, if you're going to have gas, water, electric, they had to do the trenching. We had to get, you know, the approval process along that way. So um, the, the studio, the booth was kind of a separate entity. So. So ADU is a new thing that didn't start much longer before you, I mean, it was pretty new before you chose to go the ADU route, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is all about a certain type of permitting, I guess, to allow you to have more residential square feet yeah. on your lot than normally permitted so that we can get more housing in Los Angeles. Right. Yeah, that was a, it. Was because of the housing crisis, they started to sort of expedite the process of permitting so that uh, you know there's more mother-in-laws living in the back house, I mm -hmm. guess, <laughs> instead of in the house with you, which is you know. Or in Florida, in Florida, <laughs> right, right? Yeah. And you have people stay in this space comfortably. A family stay here. We do. Yeah, my my family comes and stays. Her family comes and stays, and it's it's been great. I mean, it's it's basically a studio apartment. So you know, full shower and bathroom and. Uh, a kitchen. If you guys want a panini, I can make you a panini real quick. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you're at the end of the runway of the Van Nuys Airport, or no, the Burbank, the Burbank Airport, Airport, the Bob Hope Airport. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and the FAA has recently changed a lot of the rules, so they're like really accelerating to try to get to ten thousand feet right about here, right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Before they make the turn across the valley, yeah. and I imagine it was 
the vibration was pretty pretty outrageous. So well, we knew. How did you deal with that? That was the big thing. Is is uh, sort of instead of just approaching it from the sort of the standard soundproofing thing, what we did, uh, and George recommended an acoustician, and we sort of like went through the process. So I actually got. I ended up getting the um, what is the the U mic one. I think it is the omnidirectional oh, measurement mic. Yeah. Yeah. And so I was taking, I was out here for a week taking readings of the different types of airplanes. And, you know, so we had an understanding of what we were contending with as far as, you know, the, the low end frequency, the high end frequency. So when, you know, a weed whacker next door, I'd get a reading of that, you know, from this space to get an idea of, you know, what we had to do. And then it was just about crunching that data to look at, okay, we, what we need is not just a standard sort of two, like basic setup or, or a LA vocal booth or, yeah. you know, studio bricks or anything like that. We realized that we need a true a room inside of a room. And so we went with the double studded wall system, which was the only way to contend with that level of low end frequency. Cause it's no joke. I mean, when those big freight airliners come over, I mean, it, you actually can feel the rumble. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, there's one, one now. now. So, um, yeah, I mean, you can still hear it in the main space, but with both of these booth doors closed, it, it actually um, it's, it does a pretty good job. So we know that you did a, a tremendous effort to the ISO booth to get it really quiet. So that's fully double studded wall. Everything's separated. This the outer space, the living quarters or the control room. Mm -hmm. What extent was done out here to also mitigate some of the noise? We did obviously double drywall um, inside the ceiling. We made sure there was a separated space between uh, the roof and the ceiling. Uh, we used spray foam insulation on the underside of, of the roof to make sure that that was mitigating some of that sound, which is that expandable foam. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, yeah, as far as like the, that basic structure, everything is double drywalled. But then the big thing was making sure that this was a complete, completely separate space so it had nothing to do with this control room area wow. exactly yeah and this is a completely decoupled construction booth right right so there's not easy <laughs> no um you know well actually it's it is once you have this sort of basic you know understanding of what it requires and what it requires is a solid air gap between the two uh stud systems so as long as you have that air gap all the way around and nothing is going to penetrate through those, like a single screw can that comes through and, and couples to the exterior the frame, framing. You call it shorting out. Yeah. Shorting out is bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No short out. Uh, and in, even, the, um, uh, even the outlets, um, all of that, we puttied. We used the fire putty around that so that if there's any penetrations that it still is going to absorb some of that low-end frequency. So, so essentially, hyper overkill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, well, yeah. I mean, before you were recording in your house right next door and you were recording in what kind of a space prior to this? It was, it was just one of the bedrooms and I had a single walled homemade four by four ISO booth. Yeah. Just made just, out of MDF or something. Yeah. It was just, it was actually kind of similar. It's just a uh, idea. It was just a single walled with studs, rock wool insulation on the inside and then carpeted walls. So, so. when you went through the time, mm -hmm. the effort, which... I know Ben had to put a massive amount of effort in to get this place built to the spec that we designed with the contractor that he was that he had found. <laughs> it was quite. A, I know that was quite a process. It was an arduous task. But when you he went through it. all of that, you wanted to make sure it was significantly better than what you had started with <laughs> yeah. in yes. the house, yes. right? So. Well, yeah. I mean, the you know when I was inside the house and I'm you know on the line with Warner Brothers or Disney or one any any client. It was always, hold on, I've got a plane coming. And even that, that hold adds up time, especially if you're oh, in a yeah. one-hour session or a two-hour session and you have the hours. As I said, I have memorized the schedule of Southwest Airlines, so I know that it's like between 11.10 a.m. and 11.25. I just can't record. Um, so with this, with both these booth doors closed, I haven't had to hold for sound at all. It's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, what kind of mics are you using in there? I've got the TLM 103 and I've got the AT4073 directional. Yeah. Do you use a high pass filter on the TLM 103? No, I'm not using any. Really? No. Holy TLM cow. It doesn't have a high pass filter. Well, it doesn't have one in the mic, but you're not the pushing the button on the Apollo. You're just recording the one. Oh, you mean the floor? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, oh, okay. the, yeah, that. Because that, that, that microphone that is, a, is, a, is a torture, yeah. torture test for yeah. any space. Yeah. Like it picks <laughs> up. 
plate tectonic shift. Yeah. I think so. we, <laughs> we warn people moving, about it, but right. yes, but it's they're... a great mic, but really, really sensitive. This is treated better than most spaces, I would say for sure. Oh, cool. And Thanks. the six inches on the ceiling mm -hmm. is a huge deal, that acoustical cloud up there. Yeah. Uh, what did you notice putting up the TLM-103, turning it on, recording? Very first thing, what was your impression of the way it sounded? Um, it was just finding that those little dead spots or whatever that were inside the booth mm -hmm. and knowing exactly where to position it before I actually mounted it on the wall. Right. Because that was the big thing. It was like either to the left or the right of this soundproof window. So yeah, that I knew that there's any glass. dead space. So I set up a, a just a basic mic stand with the TLM 103. I did a couple of basic recordings and I could see it was like, oh, okay, it needs to be positioned over here. That way I'm not getting any of that sort of resonance, the boomy resonance. Yeah, when you have an extremely dead space, anything reflective, you're going to notice it, right? Oh, so for sure. You yeah. have to be very careful yeah. where you put the mic. Yeah, um, and... um. I will say the day that we finished the treatment, the acoustic treatment on the inside, I had a job the very next morning. Wow. And I you didn't really have any time to experiment. You kind no, of went and, and that was a job. That, that was actually helpful because it was like, let's get this done because I have a job <laughs> at nine a.m. You could agonize over it for a while if not. Oh, you know. easily, easily. I will say, I mean, the big thing is, is I think you know, in retrospect, looking at it objectively is. A, a really important thing if you're building a, a home studio space because you get so caught up in all the details of all of it that you sort of get so focused in on those things as opposed to like okay hold on let me take a step back what do i actually need and what do i what can i sort of you asked me a from? lot of detail questions as we went along i, I had to like, and I, you, you were doing what you had to do yeah and i was like oh he's getting Little details <laughs> but i mean that's that's it is it's it's an amalgamation of tons of details and then the big picture yeah. And then making sure you don't miss anything that's really, truly important in the process. Yeah. And then the other thing is if you've got a sealed up booth like this mm -hmm. in the San Fernando Valley, it gets hot here. Yes. So I would imagine you've got somewhat of a sophisticated ventilation system. I mean, we knew that people were going to be staying here for, you know, multiple weeks at a time. But in addition to that, I was hoping to host a class, you know, our workout group. And when you have six, eight, ten people in here at a time and you don't have proper air circulation it, it gets, gets sticky yeah it gets sticky which is going to be happening soon now the pandemic is essentially uh, yeah. right about wrapping up right yeah fingers crossed on that one yeah. until yeah. yeah ba 42 comes out hmm. um but the you know the big thing was we have two front doors we have two sets of sliding doors right and everything else is sealed up with that spray foam insulation from the underside so this is like a sealed vault essentially so we knew that we had to pull in some fresh air from outside Thermally, it's pretty efficient, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah it's going to keep whatever the temperature is in here efficiently, for sure. Maintained, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you got to get it to that temperature. So, I, I so can't we, remember, what do we do? Like a, a split system or something? Uh, it is a well, it's a standard sort of HVAC, um, and that was hung on springs. So it's a forced, it's a forced air. So there's a blower. There's a, there's a fan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and yeah, a yeah, I just, I forgot. I mean, that's how quiet it was. The uh, I couldn't remember how we did it. It's so quiet in here. I was like, "What are we yeah, doing?" Here? Yeah. Well, it also being on springs, obviously, was it was a big thing, and making sure they were the really efficient springs, so mm -hmm. you don't get any of that. Yeah, the sound, there's no hum there's um, no because that, you know. And so once we vented it into or ducted it into the booth, um, and on top of that, once it's vented in there, we also had this six inch cloud. So that actually helps with uh, mitigate some of that sound, that sort mm. of low end. But then mm -hmm. we'd use the ERV system that's in this little closet here, and we vented or ducted that into the exact same exhaust. So that there's two connections. One is for the HVAC, and the other one is the ERV the, for the fresh air. So it's all coming through the same vent, and then we have the return, which is going uh, on the other side. So Yeah, so that booth is getting... Really fresh air, yeah, like yeah. literally from the yeah. outside. Yeah, but those are the yeah. those are the 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 devils in the details with all that kind of right. stuff, you know. And that and and that was just one factor that went into all of this to make sure that it was a comfortable space. Because again, if you're hosting multiple people, um, you know, or like if it's a different studio where you're actually hosting clients and you're not just teaching a class, you want right. them to be as comfortable as possible, you right. know. So um, having that fresh air and making sure that that you know it's climate controlled. Because, you know, here in Burbank, it gets, in July, August, it gets 110 degrees. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's it can be pretty brutal. It's just starting to heat up now. Oh, I great. think today's going to yeah, be the Yeah, today's 90s, like 90-something, right? yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, but it feels great in here. Yeah. Was there anything that had to be adjusted, like when it was all done and you were starting to use it for real? Was there anything that had to be adjusted or wasn't really usable yet or not quite right? Or did you get it pretty close on the first go? First I actually got it, got it pretty good the first go. Um, once the acoustic treatment went in, um, and we knew, I mean, you're, we were running into snafus the entire time, totally. you know, with a contractor not getting, uh, you know, materials in time or, um, these, uh, the, the big sliding doors from soundproofwindows.com were delayed because of COVID and, you know, all Supply of that chain, et cetera, et cetera. Oh man. Yeah. It was a nightmare. Workforce not being at work. Well, then the, then they had the, um, uh, in the canal, Remember the ship that? Got, oh yeah, oh yeah, the, the Panama. Canal, yeah. yeah, the Panama Canal. Yeah, yeah and that got out. all jacked up, and so that took that added a tremendous amount of time just to get something that was basic, Jeez. you know. So I'm there like, sorry, we're on the canal right now. We're you know we're on the way. And it's like okay, it's fine. <laughs> this has already been two <laughs> yeah. years. So <laughs> wow. yeah, not to pry, total cost for the entire rebuilding. To- total cost of you, you know from. Balls to bones to just the, the finished product was just under a hundred thousand. I think that's amazing. Yeah, well, and it, to make a multi purpose. Honestly, I know it's yeah. some spaces of cost that we've done that are nowhere near as bathroom, yeah, uh, kitchen, yeah, that's including the fixtures in the kitchen. That's the well, yeah, I, I guess it might be a maybe bit just over a hundred thousand, like okay. with the fridge, yeah, or, yeah, or something, you know, that's still. That's really impressive. Well, I, kept I, it I would tight. recommend to anybody that's building a home space that um, to make sure that you're checking with your contractor's contract that um, anything that's potentially added that's going to add the scope to the change scope orders. of work, yeah. change orders, that that's not going to have, or make sure that there's a, a sort of mathematics behind that, that it's if it's an incremental addition to what the baseline price is to make sure that you have that clear and in writing. We had that negotiated in our contract with the contractor from the beginning, and he knew that, look, this is the bottom line. This is how much we have. So if anything comes up as far as change orders are concerned, you know, you're going to have to contend with that on your end. So that was, up, that was kind of in his <laughs> – that was up to him. He had to come right. up with that. So I hate saying this phrase, but there's something we always say, and that is cheap, fast, or good, pick two. So right. I think you got something that, on a really good price that came out really good, yeah. it just, but it took a long, long time. Well, <laughs> it also, time. yeah, not just because of COVID, though. I also, I think, you know, looking back now, it was definitely the wrong contractor because, you know, and that's one of the most important things is, it, is somebody who's young and hungry sometimes is biting off more than they can chew. And it's great when they're young and hungry and they want something, but if they're they're taking on more and more jobs and they, they have a limited crew because literally there would be a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday that would go by where we're still trying to get just drywall up for the next inspection. And weekdays would go by where nobody would show up to the job site. And that's not okay. You right. know? Um, so you would think that they'd want to expedite the process of getting it finished so that they can get their money for the next phase and then move on. But every time we cut a check, the guys would show up for sure. Well, it's usually the thing. Yeah. But also because... Everything has to be so precise with this. Somebody has to know what they're doing in order to build a booth like this and build a structure like this to service that booth. Yeah, I mean, I was signing off on some of it. I was doing a lot of Zoom inspections. But at the end of the day, Ben was the one that was here really keeping an eye out on what was going on here. Well, I couldn't go anywhere else. It was oh, a pandemic. Stuck here. You know? He was also stuck yeah. here. Yeah. He made the contractor's life a living hell, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but when they I mean, start, yeah, <laughs> when they start rude. yelling at you for stop micromanaging my job, it's like it's my job, buddy. You know, yeah, let's remember whose <laughs> who's like, job it is. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, it there there is a necessity to be diplomatic in that, but you know, the the hard thing was you don't have an unlimited budget or unlimited time. Exactly that, right? And I know another project who is a friend of ours that was essentially almost kind of one of those projects. He put the time and the money as long as it took and almost as much as it cost mm. to do it. And that's a luxury a lot of people don't have. And you did you I think what you accomplished here, all things considered, you got an incredible product for Thank that hundred thousand dollars. Like it's really, really impressive. Thanks. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think the big thing was understanding from a personal level, we we're, you know, about to have our second child. 
and my office that was in the house that had my ISO booth, all of that had to be cleared out so we could turn it into a nursery. So that additional five months meant that the baby was sleeping in our room for an additional however many months, which meant that we were not getting any sleep, sleep whatsoever. Yeah. So then you start making rash decisions, you know, like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to buy all the equipment. <laughs> <laughs> so how has your relationship improved since the studio went online and you've been able to work out here? Has things gotten better? Our personal relationship? Yeah, yeah. Me and Jen? Yeah. Oh, it's so much better. Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. 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 I mean, there's no, there was no space to like have any separation there. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, now it's literally, you know, we get the kids off to school. I come out here and start my work day and she has her work day that she's, you know, our right. kitchen is her office now. Um, and she's fine with it. And it's, you know, it's actually the dynamic is great because it feels like, okay, it's nine o'clock. It's time to start my, my jobs. There's boundaries there. Right. Well, as long as you have your own space, otherwise you get people with space and yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. We, we had built my wife an entire other structure. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Because she was like, "You've got that great man cave out there." And, right, and, right. So yeah, yeah. Well, she uses thing. it too. I mean, yeah. you know, when we host or you know, if we have people over, you know, it's not just for the voiceover studio. Right. The fact that it was a, a permitted ADU is also great because we can open up these doors and play some music and right. you know, barbecue in the backyard and stuff like that. But. Yeah, I mean, having that separation is definitely a, a key component. And it also, this has become sort of my creative space. Right. You know what I mean? So I can listen to music or I can watch video references for whatever audition or whatever right. job that I have. And it just allows you a little bit more of like a, a that creative sort of dojo. Now, in order to do this, you had to be doing the business in order to make this investment to make it work for you. I mean, you've you're got doing to, the business you've and got, you are running the business right. and maintaining all that yeah. while building this all at the same time, which was challenging. And it is still, I mean, it's all, that's always the challenge, right. right. Is to maintain and make sure that you're not letting any of your clients down or, you know, the people that you work with or for, um, you know, the, uh, I think at the very beginning, I, I just kind of, I let my agent know, I let, you know, some of my clients know, um, you know, we're just getting this underway. So if I'm delayed a little bit, I apologize. I will get to it as soon as I possibly can. But, you know, cultivating those kinds of relationships when Absolutely. they know that it's like, a, you know, I'm in the process of building something that, trust me, you know, a year and a half from now, it's going to be back. How long me. were you, would you consider yourself a full-time working voiceover pro before you took this plunge? I, I mean, I was full-time before. But for know. quite some time. How, how many, how about how long? Let's see. Uh, I've been making a living as a voice actor for about six or seven years now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Point being is, it, yeah, it takes got, time. You you yeah, got to yeah. earn your way well, to I've, this place in this business. Yeah. This, this is not what's going to get you voiceover work. You got to get voiceover work to get you one of these. Right. Well, I've been in the Los Angeles market now for eighteen years, but I've only been making a living as a voice actor for seven of those years. So it took over a decade of taking classes and pounding mm -hmm. the pavement, exactly. making sure you're networking and learning about like the technical components of some of these things that we have to work with it's not just about your craft yeah it's also about knowing oh this is how to port forward in source connect <laughs> yeah you know well before we wrap it up give us a little rundown of your organization your 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 service that you provide and tell us more about that yeah the voice actors network um i took over voice actors network five years ago question mark I don't know. Time is irrelevant now. Um, uh, and uh, before times, in the before in times, in the before times, yeah. in the long before times. Um, and uh, that's essentially advanced level classes for voice actors who are sort of working pro level um, with uh, casting directors, voice directors, agents, um, people who are um, sort of in a position to give you a better understanding about you know maybe this is why you're not booking. You know maybe this right. is why you know you know maybe. Take, a, take another class with this person to, to really sort of dial in your read or um, and getting getting one on one feedback from the people that are decision makers in the industry, whether it's from Disney animation casting or DreamWorks or Blizzard or the big video game companies. And it's been great. There's now um, <clears throat> let's see, since I took over, there's now, I think, 1800 active members in the voice hey. actors network. I say active, wow. but they're members of the right. community. Yeah. But, uh, you know, a few hundred who are actively taking the workshops and the clinics. What's it take to become a member of that community? What do you do? 
So there's a vetting process. We do okay. we do make sure that people have at least I think it's two years of, of regular acting classes. They have to have at least one full year of voiceover specific classes. Mm. They have to have professional demo reels, mm -hmm. um, so that we can listen to a sample of the work and help to navigate um, with them to to make sure that they're ready for that sort of stage of their career. Because if if you've never taken an animation class before, I don't want to put you in front of the head of Disney Animation Casting. That's just not doing you any service at all right. so we we always provide resources for people like go take you know charlie adler's class or go take this person's class this would be a great way for you to sort of or like a lot of people who are character focused who have done a lot of theater work get a piece of commercial copy and they're like i don't know how to talk about apr percentage you know so um it's helping them to navigate how to move forward in their career and it's it's great the coolest feeling is when somebody takes one of our clinics you know, especially like an agency clinic and they go, that agent signed me, you know, yeah. or I booked my, you know, I booked my first video game after that, that workshop, you know, that's cool. It's a cool feeling. Yeah. So very good. Yeah. Impress, impressive facility. This is really, <laughs> this is really nice. Thanks, Dan. Impressive mustache. Thank you. Yeah. Well done. Hey. <laughs> well, it, hey, what can I say about that? There's a lot of impressive facial hair here. Right. There um, is, yeah. <laughs> I got some grays, though, after this last year and a half. Yeah, that's why I just shaved. It's starting actually. to come in, yeah. yeah this is yeah. starting to turn white, so, which is really what <laughs> Me I <too>. wanted. <laughs> anyway, I'm so glad we got to see you today. Yeah, it's man. been a long, long time coming. We've been yeah, wanting to see you for a long time. I mean, this is like Reschedule. the fifth time we've tried this. We've rescheduled many times, yeah. but uh, yeah. I'm so glad we got to say hi and see this place. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Yeah. And I hope it, you know, just yeah. brings back tenfold what you put into it yeah. and use it in good health and yeah big success with it yeah Thanks, mazel yeah. tov Ma yeah mazel, mazel tov, tov. <laughs> <laughs> no i appreciate it guys it's good to see y'all